Well, nonsense. The child's a killer. Well, she has the constitution of a goat. She'll outlive us all. Yes, especially if some of you killers don't get a night's sleep, and I mean you, Mrs. Keller. You hear him, Katie? I hear. I brought up two of them. This is my wife's first. She is a battle scarred yet. Now, don't be merely considerate, Doctor. Is my girl going to be all right? Oh, by morning she'll be knocking down Cat Keller's fence. And there isn't anything else we should do? Put up stronger fences? <laughs> no, just let her get well. She knows better how to do it than we do. The thing is, the fever's gone. These things come and go in infants, we don't know why. Let's just call it acute congestion of the stomach and brain. I'll see you to your buggy, doctor. Never seen a baby before with so much vitality, that's for sure. Oh, hush now. Don't you cry. You've been troubled enough. Call it acute congestion, indeed. I don't see what's so cute about a congestion. Just a question of 
money, Arthur. You're Marshall now. You've got the Yankee money. You might as well. It is not money. The child has been to specialists all over Alabama and Tennessee. <laughs> if I thought it would do good, I'd have heard every full doctor in the country. I do think he will write to him soon. Katie, how many times can you let them break your heart? Any number of times. As long as there is the least chance for her to see or to hear. Well, there isn't. Now I must finish here. Well, I think, with your permission, Captain, I'd like to write. I said no, Katie. Writing does no harm, Arthur. It's just a little bitty letter to see if he can help you. Well, he can't. Well, we won't know that to be fact, Captain, till after we write. Katie, he can't. Father stands up. That makes it a fact. Now, you be quiet. I'm bad to hear enough by females without your impudence. Now, look at her. Look at her. Now, Katie, now might as well try and work in a hen yard as in this house. You really have to put her away, Father. What? So asylum. It's the kindest thing. Why, James, she's your sister. Not a nobody. Half sister. Half mentally defective. She can't even keep herself clean. It's not pleasant to see her about all the time. Do you dare complain of what you can see? Now that this conversation is at an end, I will thank you not to broach it again, Ed. <laughs> While I have done as much as I can bear, I can't give my whole life to it. This house is in sixes and sevens from morning to night over this child. Time some attention was paid to Mildred here instead. You wake her, Captain. I want a piece of this house! Now I tell you, I don't care how, but I tell you one way we won't have it, by rushing up and down the country every time someone hears of a new quack. Now I am as sensible to this affliction as anyone else. It hurts me to look at the child. Well, it was not our affliction to write about, Captain. <laughs> Helen! My, my, my buttons! Helen! <laughs> what? Uh, oh, she wants the doll that had eyes. Oh, my goodness me, I am not decent. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Aunt Anne. I'll sew them back on. She doesn't know any better. She'll never hold ever let her do anything she takes to remind her to do it. Boy, you be quiet. What did I say? You talk too much. I was agreeing with you. Well, whatever it was, the bright <laughs> child. At least she can have her the little things that she wants. <laughs> it's worth a couple of buttons. Kate, look. Why, this child has more sense than any of these Keller men. <laughs> if there's ever a way to reach that mind of hers. Helen! Oh, Helen! You are not to do such things! Oh, how can I make you understand? Katie! How can I get through to you? Oh, my darling! Katie, some way of teaching her and I own of discipline has to be to stop this! Oh, how can you discipline an afflicted child? Is it her fault? I didn't say it was her fault. Well, then who's? I don't know what to do, and how am I supposed to teach her? Peter, does she's black and blue? Well, it isn't safe to let her run around loose. Now, there must be some way of confining her somehow so that she can't keep doing this. Like a cage? To grow a child, Captain, she needs to use those limbs. Answer me one question. Is it fair to Mildred here? Well, you well that was! <laughs>
nothing for the girl, of course. It was Dr. Bell who first thought that she might somehow be taught. Now, as in the family, only the uh, suitable governess, Miss Sandy Sullivan, has been found here in Boston and will come. It will no doubt be difficult for you there, Annie, but uh, it was difficult for you here at our school, too, hmm? Gratifying, yes. When you first came to us, you could not spell your name to accomplish so much in just a few years, but always an Irish battle for independence. This is my last time to counsel you, Annie, and you do lack some, well, by some I mean all, uh, what? Tact? Talent to bend to others. And what has saved you on more than one occasion here at Perkins is uh, a report to expel you to. Your eyes hurt? My ears, Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> Or a back at Tewksbury where the children learn to be saucy. Annie, I know how dreadful it was for you there, but that battle is dead and done with. Why not let it stay buried? I think God must tell me resurrection. What? Well, he keeps digging up that battle. That is not the proper thing to say. That is what I mean. Yes, but I know what I'm like. What's this child like? Like? Well, writer told to start off. No one knows. And if she is dull, you have no patience with this? In grown-ups, you have to, Mr. Nonius. I mean, in children, it seems a little precocious. Can I use that word? Only if you can spell it. <laughs> Premature. <laughs> so I hope she's at least the right one. Not a deaf, blind, mute. Who knows? She is uh, like a little safe lock that no one can open. Perhaps there's a treasure inside. Maybe it's empty, too? Uh, possible. I should warn you, she is much given to families. I mean, something's inside. Well, so am I going to believe all I hear. Maybe you should warn them. And I've written them nothing of your history. You'll find yourself among strangers now who know nothing of it. Well, <coughs> we'll keep them in a state of less ignorance then. Perhaps you should tell it. Why? I have enough trouble with people who don't know. So they will understand when you have trouble. The only time I have trouble is when I'm right. Is it my fault so often? <laughs> I won't give them trouble, Mr. Anonymous. I'll be so late like they won't even notice I've come. And be humble. It's not as if you have so many offers to pick and choose. You don't need their affection working with this child. I hope I won't need their pity. Uh, we can all use a little pity. Now, so, you are no longer our pupil. We throw you into the world a teacher, if the child can be taught. And no one expects miracles, even for $25 a month. <laughs> In this envelope, a loan for the railroad, <coughs> which you will repay when you have a bank account, but uh, in this box, a gift with our love. I think other children are ready to say goodbye. Mr. Anonymous. Dear Mr. Anonymous. Well, what should I say? I'm an ignorant, opinionated girl, and everything I am I owe to you? Oh, well, that's only half true, Annie. Which half? I crawled in here like a drowned rat. I thought I died when Jimmy died, and that I'd never again come alive. You say with love so easy, but I meant love to soul since, and never will, I suppose. But this place gave me more than my eyes back, or, or taught me how to spell, which I'll never learn anyway, but <laughs> with all the fights and the trouble I've been in here, it, it taught me what hope is and, and how to live again. And, and I don't want to say goodbye. Don't let them in, I'm crying. They will not see you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Annie! 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 Here, Beatrice. This is a present. You thought you were going away from it, Annie. Oh, well, no, you shouldn't have gotten me anything. We did. We did. Where is it? Don't go away. Away. Alice has it. Alice! Where's Alice? Here I am. Here I am. I have it. I have it, everybody. Should I open it? Open oh, it. Open, open it. Open, open it. it. Is it open, Annie? It's open. Put them on. Miss Hopkins says your eyes hurt since the operation, and you're going through the sun's fears. Put them on now. Don't go, Annie. Those on 
his beard. Do they fit all right? Oh, they fit just <coughs> fine. Did you put them on? Are they pretty, Annie? Oh, my eyes feel 100% better and pretty white. Do you know how I look in them? Splendid Dylan quick like a racehorse. And there's another present. Beatrice, we have a present for Helen, too. Give it to her, Beatrice. We took up a collection to buy it and Laura dressed it. It's beautiful. So don't forget to give them to, to Helen when you give it, right, Annie? I promise to be the first thing I give her. If I don't keep it for myself, that is. You know I can't be trusted with dolls. <laughs> don't go, Annie, to her. Sarah, dear, I don't want to go. Then why are you going? Because I'm a big girl now, and big girls have to earn a living. It's the only way I know how, but if you don't smile for me first, what I have to do is... What? Put you in my suitcase instead of this doll, and take you to Helen in Alabama. <laughs> Come, children, we must get a trunk into the carriage and into a trainer. No one will go to our family. Come. Where are we going, Annie? Jimmy. Where are we going? I said, I'm taking care of you. Forever and ever. Annie Sullivan, virtually blind. James Sullivan. Brother, what's wrong with your leg there, Sonny? Forever and ever. Can't he walk without that crutch? Girl to the women's ward, boy to the men's. Annie! Annie! Don't let them take me! Annie! 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 Coming! Seems like everyone hates me and suffers the lady. 
I brought you some stick candy. Now one little nibble sweets can't do any harm. Get the kettle! Now how am I gonna get her to eat her supper when you are filling her up with that trap? Now you tend to your work!
Ivy Green, uh, Miss Sullivan. I, I take it you are Miss Sullivan? Miss Amy, my husband, Captain Keller. Captain, how do you do? Well, it's a pleasure to see you at last. I trust you had an agreeable journey. Oh, I had several. <laughs> when did this country get so big? Where's like the bag, Father? Where Miss Sullivan can get at it, I imagine. Yes, please. Where's Helen? Uh, by the ports, Jimmy? Miss Amy, we put you in the upstairs corner room. If there's any breeze we've got this summer, you'll feel it there. And the suitcase? I'll take the suitcase, thanks. Oh, not at all. I'll have it, Miss Sullivan. Well, I'd like it. I think you'll find here in the South that we view women as Let me have it. as flowers of civilization now. Please, Amy. I have something in it for Helen. <coughs> Thank you. Now, when do I see her? Miss Amy. There's Helen. Katie, I don't. Very rough, Katie. Well, I like her, Captain. They certainly were a peculiar kind of woman in the North. How old is she? Oh, well, she's not in her teens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is practically a child. Now, what is her family like shipping her off alone this far? I couldn't tell. She's close mouthed about some things. Why does she wear those glasses? I like to look at a person in the eyes when I'm talking to them. They're for the sun. Blind. What, blind? She's had nine operations on her eyes, one right before she left. Blind? Good heavens! Do they expect one blind child to teach another? Has she experienced at least? How long does she teach there? Well, she was a pupil. Kate! Kate, this is her first position? Well, she was valedictorian. Now here's a house full of grown-ups can't even cope with that child. How do they expect a half-blind Yankee schoolgirl to manage her? Great improvement. Now we have two of them to look after. Boy, do look after those strawberry plants! <laughs> Nothing I say is right. Well, then why say anything? Don't be long, Captain. Supper will be served soon. <laughs> All the trouble I went to, and that's how I look. <laughs> 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 Find out she's tickless? She is. D. O. L. L. Dog. This is a game. An alphabet. Alphabet. For the deaf. D. 
L. L. How bright she is. Think she knows what she's doing? See? She retains everything. She's a monkey. She's a bright little monkey, all right. <coughs> she wants her doll back. She spells it. She doesn't even know that the baby has a name. Of course not. Who expects you to now? I just want her fingers and toe and the lips. Won't mean anything to her. No! She doesn't like that alphabet, Miss Sullivan. You invent it yourself. Spanish monks! Under a vow of silence, which I wish you'd take. <laughs> Cake from Washington North. It's the best I could do. <coughs> C. Don't know, Miss Kate. For some 
reason she didn't have no appetite tonight. <laughs> Well, personally, I can't say the same. I am famished. Katie, your plate. Well, where's Miss Amy? In her room. <laughs> In her room. Now, doesn't she know that hot food needs to be hot? Go upstairs and bring her down at once, Jimmy. Certainly. I'll need a ladder. <laughs> what? A ladder. It shouldn't take me long. Well, but what shouldn't take you long? Jimmy, do as I say. Go upstairs and tell Miss Sullivan supper is getting cold. She's locked in her room. Telling me not to say anything. What? Bonnie, would you see if you can find Helen? She has that key. Yes, Miss Kate. She is out by the pump. Miss Sullivan, are you in there? Oh, I'm in here, all right. Is there no key on your side? Well, if there were a key in here, I wouldn't be in here. <laughs> Helen took it. Lovey on my side is me. Miss Sullivan, I'm not in the house ten minutes. I don't know how you managed it. Even I'm not on my side. Barney! Mm -hmm. Yes, Captain. Now you put that meat back in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> she does not have the key. Nonsense. She must have the key. Did you search her pockets? Well, of course I did, Captain. She has no key. Katie, she must have the key. Would you, would you prefer to search her yourself, Captain? No, I would not prefer to search her myself. She nearly took my kneecap off early this evening when I merely tried to... Now you take that ladder back! Certainly. Well, I guess you could have hidden the key. Well, where? Well, I don't know. Anywhere. Under a rock or in the flower bed. Out in the grass somewhere. Katie, I cannot dig up the entire grass to try and find a missing key. Jimmy! Sir? If you bring me a ladder... Certainly. <laughs> Go on, hurry up! Funny, oh, oh, what is Mildred doing up? Captain Wilco with all that hollering. <laughs> Hmm. 